Facebook in 2017. This platform has really changed a lot in the last decade and it has really become a powerful business tool. And so today we're going to explore some tips and tricks that you can use to take advantage of all that Facebook has to offer this year. My name is Lorraine Ball and I own a company called Roundpeg. We are a digital agency and we spend an awful lot of time in Facebook both for ourselves and for our clients. And so I'm going to share some of the things that we've learned along the way. We're going to talk about agenda. We're going to talk in our agenda we're going to talk about the basics, different types of content, how to measure and figure out what's working and what's not working and also a little bit about advertising because we are living in a pay-to-play world. Right up front, some basic etiquette and things that you should be thinking about as you're getting ready to use Facebook for your business. The first thing is you really want to complete the information on your page. You want to have a solid About Us section. You want to make sure that there's um, updated map and direction information. You want to encourage people to write reviews and make sure there's a link to your website. If you're going to do this, you have to think about Facebook a little bit differently than you do other advertising vehicles. You need to balance self-promotion with helpful and entertaining information. You want to be active, but you don't want to overwhelm. So posting once or twice a day is really about the max. If you've got a lot to say, plan it out. You don't have to treat it as if everything you need to say has to be published today. If you're going to be successful on Facebook, you can't just post content and walk away. You need to be available occasionally to answer questions and to like and share content from other people. You want to be helpful and create a positive experience when people visit your page. And you have to be ready to respond if someone is unhappy. And if you are going to share information, if you're going to share a picture, always make sure that you give a little bit of context, that you tell people why this information is relevant. So let's get started. First thing I want to do is I want to talk about avatars and cover image. People spend a lot of time focusing on the cover image and what is it going to look like. And here's the truth. Very few people are actually going to see the cover image after the first time they like your page. Once they like their, your page, they don't typically come back to it. How they run into your content is like this. They see a status update from you in their timeline. And now you see the problem. While that Sundance Vacations looked great, here on the full-size page in the timeline, it's really hard to read. And so if you have a long company name, remember that the name of your organization will always appear next to your avatar. And so what you want to do is come up with an image. For them, I recommended just blowing up the ball, which is part of their logo, and putting that in the timeline as their avatar. You can see side by side the difference. The full company name is kind of redundant and that beach ball is much more vibrant and it stands out. Now these are blown up full size on my screen. Imagine how much smaller these avatars are when you're looking at it from your telephone. When you are uploading images to Facebook, the ideal size for your cover image 
is 851 by 315 pixels, and the avatar should be a square 180 by 180. Now you can upload a larger cover image, but the ratio should be the same so that it sizes down appropriately and doesn't get cropped. A couple of Facebook basics, things to keep in mind. Number one, this is a low volume high value platform. What I mean by that is it's not really about the quantity of the content that you post, but it is about the quality. One or two really good posts a day are going to make a much more positive impression than three, four, or five mediocre ones. Twitter, in contrast, is a high volume platform. If you're going to be on Facebook, you want to be thinking about a minimum of three times a week and a maximum of about ten times a week. More than that, people are going to start wondering whether you actually do any real business. It is totally quality versus quantity when it comes to Facebook. Some other things to keep in mind is the balance. What kind of content you should you be sharing? They, your content should fall into one of these three categories. 50% should be very focused on the social, on the lighthearted, designed to get likes and shares and comments, to entertain and invite conversations. This is where you might do quick questions or little polls. Share photographs of your office cats. I know that we do. Because Facebook, at the core, it is a social site. And so even if you are sharing business information, even if you are a B2B organization, this is where you share the lighter side of your business behind the scenes, meet our employees, take a look at what we did at our holiday party. About 30% of your content can be useful and informative. Blog post articles, links to tips, checklists, things people should know in general. And if you do these things well, then you earn the right with your last 20% to do things that are more call to action, links to a special offer, a coupon, or a download. To increase your reach, to be effective on Facebook, a couple things you should keep in mind. The first is tag, tag, tag. And by that I mean when you put a post up that includes information on another person or another organization, go ahead and tag them. Now, companies can't tag people who are not, who don't already like the page, but companies can certainly tag other companies. For example, I had a client just, just this week who runs a heating and air conditioning company. He installed a piece of equipment at a nonprofit children's camp, and he donated the installation fee and his distributor donated the equipment, the cost of the equipment. The camp thanked them both on Facebook and tagged them so the information showed up not only on the camp page, but it showed up on the Chapman page as well. And that kind of cross-marketing introduced a whole lot of people who send their kids to Jamison Camp to Chapman Heating. You want to interact with other people. Even as a page, you won't be able to post on an individual person's page, but again, you can, you can interact on other pages. And when someone comments on your page, be sure to thank them, reply, make a comment to them as well. 
The other thing you can do to increase your reach is you're posting this content on your company page. You want to, as a person, share those status updates on your personal page. If you have multiple employees, you want to encourage all of them to periodically share the company information on their pages. And if someone comments, likes, shares, asks a question, you want to think about a 30-minute response time. Now that's hard if you're working during the day, and what I finally did is I actually put the notifications on my phone. So if someone takes the time to like, comment, or share, I get a little pop-up message and I'll hop over to Facebook. Now, if we had a really high interaction level on our pages, that would be harder to do. But I'm going to tell you, we manage probably 10 to 12 different company pages for 10 to 12 different companies, and it's doable. Um, these are all small businesses. They don't get a ton of interaction. But when people see that you respond and respond quickly, they're more likely to comment as well. And when they do, their community is more likely to see your updates. There are lots of different types of content that you can share on Facebook. I'm going to talk about some of the ones that you're probably most familiar with, but then I'm also going to talk about some of the new content types. Facebook, at its core, started with simple text updates. You can do a fill-in-the-blank. These are great because people like to be able to participate, and these tend to get a lot of interaction because it's really easy to fill in the blanks. Tell us what you don't understand about Pinterest. That's a little tougher than um, some of the, the better uh, fill in the blanks. I might do something like, uh, the last time I went bowling was, or my favorite rainy day activity is. So really simple, really easy, one or two quick words. The shorter the answer, the more people are likely to respond. Something else that does really well if you are in a business where it's kind of a niche industry and there's specific travel tips or specific fun facts, um, we worked with a, uh, a doctor who used to post a health fact every day, kind of obscure health information, like how long is the average intestine, how long does it take um, to fully digest different kinds of foods. People like those sort of weird little trivia things. Um, you can also ask quite just a general question. What's on your bucket list? Where do you want to go? I have a friend who has done a question of the day every day for the last three years. And he routinely now gets 20, 30, 40 people that, that look for it every day and comment and share. And it's really helped build his community. Questions, contests, polls. If you're going to do something like this, keep a couple of things in mind. Number one, make it easy to answer. It shouldn't require a lot of research or fact-finding on the, on the part of your followers. Secondly, keep the answer short, because remember, a significant number of people are going to be interacting with Facebook from their phones. And so as they're typing, if you expect them to write a long answer, they'll get tripped up along the way and just stop. Also consider using a prefix to indicate that this is part of a series. Robbie does a question of the day, quote, and then he has his question. And people have learned to look for that phrase, question of the day, this week's poll, today's health tip, today's fun, fun medical fact. Let people know it's part of a series, and if they like it, 
they'll be more likely to look for it again and again. Some other ideas on content types, um, posting with a link. Now, most of the time, if you post with a link, Facebook will actually now generate um, a snippet from, your, from the website that you're linking to, and they may even pull a picture. Statistics are great. People love the numbers. We see people really reacting positively any time we share these kind of fun and bizarre little trivia tips. But text updates are only going to get you so far. Facebook is a visual medium and what we've seen is that posts with an image will get a hundred and twenty percent more engagement than just a text image. So let's take a look at some of the options with visuals. You can do just a photo, you can do videos, and you can do digital content. I'm going to talk in more detail in a moment about each of these. But this last one, the digital content, you've probably seen these in your timeline. It's a picture with a little bit of text on it. And if you're not a graphic designer, you may look at it and go, wow, that would be cool. I would love to create that. But I don't have the tools. Well, I'm going to tell you my favorite easy way to create really great looking digital content. If you know how to use PowerPoint, that's all you need. Open up a brand new PowerPoint slide presentation and upload a photo. Enlarge it so it fills the screen. And then overlay text. When it comes time to save it, you can do a Save as JPEG. And PowerPoint will ask you if you want to save the entire slide deck or just this one image. Save just that one image and it will come out perfectly sized to share on Facebook. In general, if you're creating images for Facebook, the best size is 1,200 pixels wide by 630 tall. It'll give you that nice landscape image and it'll really fill the screen nicely. Also, as you're thinking about images, things to keep in mind, the kind of images that do well, Images that include faces, images that include animals stand out. Also, think about and look for images that have a single focal point, something that pulls you in, and a pop of color. The Facebook timeline is very white, and so this wonderful blue ice pack on top of the cute dog's face really pulls your eye and that's what you think of first. If you're going to put text on your images, be careful though that you don't put the text too close to the edge of the image because Facebook will crop it and on desktop and mobile the image will display a little differently. So make sure you give yourself a good border around the edges and avoid them when you're sharing images. When you're selecting an image for Facebook, you really need to plan ahead and think about, am I going to use the image for an update or an ad? Because Facebook has a rule. No more than 20% of the image can have text. So this image on the left was actually created to be used as an ad. You'll notice that there's really no text on it and it's just kind of a strong graphic. The one on the right was, was designed as a cover image for an event, but we can also just use it in the timeline and it has information that you need. But I can't, even though it says here boost this event, I can't really boost it because Facebook will turn it down or will not display it as often because 
there's too much text on the graphic. One of the things that we often do is create the same image and the same graphic for use in the timeline and in the ad. I know I'm going to be able to put text above or below it, and so I just have the plain picture. But what's nice is if I have shared this in the timeline and then this appears afterwards, people kind of remember the text and they know what the image is about even if it doesn't say it. When you're thinking about images, more is, be more is better or more are better. Albums and multiple images may get up to 180% more engagement than text. And there are a lot of different ways that you can share multiple images. You can do a collage or an album. You can update multiple images at a time and you can either just put them in the timeline or actually create an album. Which is best? Well, if you're going to do a collage of maybe three or four images and they are, it's a one time that you're going to have this topic, then just upload it to the timeline, it'll display and then go away. But if you have a topic that you're going to come back to again and again, if you are collecting photos from an event, if you routinely post on the same topic, then create an album. The advantage to creating an album is every time you add new pictures, it'll pop back in the timeline, and anyone who has commented, shared, or liked any of the images in the album are likely to see it again. But how many images should you share at any given time? I would keep it to about three because it looks really good and really attractive in the timeline. The other thing is that people have the attention span of a flea. If they see three images, they may click because they're like, oh, I want to take a closer look at all of those. But if they see three images and then it says plus ten more, they actually are less likely to click because they don't want to spend the time looking at every single image. So there is a sweet spot. There is a maximum number of images, and if you go beyond that, you actually will hurt your engagement and interaction. Something that we've started playing with recently is the Facebook slideshow. If you're looking to um, organize a number of images and you want to make sure that people see all of them, you can upload the images and Facebook will transform those static images into a little slideshow, kind of like if you were um, running a PowerPoint presentation on autoplay. They'll put a little bit of music underneath it if you want. I don't really recommend it. Their music choices are pretty god-awful. But what we have found is when we do these slideshows, we get great engagement. Why? Because as people are scrolling through the timeline, they start playing automatically. The images start scrolling, and so all of a sudden, as people are browsing, they've got a little bit of this motion. These are really good if your primary objective is to grow your fans. They work well in ads, and one of the things that we do is the first image is just a great engaging picture. But later in the ad, later in the slideshow, we'll put in a company logo. We may put in a heavy text message that if it was the first thing on the slideshow, Facebook would not really share it very frequently in the timeline. But if you put it in the timeline and what Facebook sees is that great cover image that's interesting and pretty, they're more likely to share it organically. So, slideshows are awesome. The other thing is the carousel. And here, each image goes in side by side by side 
And to see all of them, you have to click on that little arrow to advance. These are great if you have like a sequential story. Um, uh, we have someone who put together a wonderful um, recipe and, and kind of did start to finish photos. That's terrific. And you can show the first one, the second one, and then show the final product. It's great for sequential stories, and you can have sort of a different sentence or tag at the bottom of each one. This is ideal if you're trying to drive traffic to your website, because if somebody will click through and stay with you for five or six images, you've kind of hooked them, and that's a great time to then offer them an opportunity to jump to your website. Something to keep in mind if you're going to do either the carousels or the slideshows. All of the images need to be the same size and shape. It's okay if you're doing a collage, if there's one tall and two wide images. That'll look great, but it won't look good on these carousels and slideshows. Video. Facebook has really exploded with video. It's always been popular, but with the addition of Facebook Live, you're seeing an awful lot of video in the timeline. If you're going to play with Facebook Live, some things to keep in mind. First, you want to promote before you broadcast. And Facebook has a really nice option that allows you to send a quick message to all of your fans and followers to say, hey, we're going to be broadcasting in 30 minutes. We're going to be talking about this. If you're going to do Facebook Live, however, you need to prepare and you need to practice. Even though live is supposed to be spontaneous, it doesn't mean it needs to be sloppy. This is just a little silly little tip, but set your phone in airplane mode. That will allow you to live stream the video across the internet and it'll prevent incoming calls and text messages from popping up while you're trying to shoot the video. Make it fun and personal. This is not where you want to have a serious stuffy video. You can do that on your website or do that on LinkedIn. This should be fun and personal. Optimize the recording, and by that, I mean after the recording is done, go ahead and create a blog post um, or a status update on Facebook using the video, because in many cases, post-show views may actually exceed the live view. You have a great opportunity to reach lots more people. And then after you're done, look at the results. Look at, did people comment? Did they like it? Did they hang with you? And then try it again. Facebook has also launched something new called The Note. And essentially, this is a blog post. When I logged into The Note, it looked and felt exactly like the blogging platform on LinkedIn. You can have a featured image. You can actually have a detailed blog post. And the hyperlinks work, so you can write your blog post and then link to your website. The one thing, however, that's kind of weird right now is you cannot boost or advertise these kind of posts. And I think this is the only kind of post that you can't boost. Okay, we've talked about a lot of different content. What you want to do is sort of create a weekly content plan. Don't let it happen by accident. Sit down on Friday afternoon and brainstorm what you're going to do. List out all the different types of content and keep the 50-30-20 rule in mind. Collect your assets and actually you can schedule in advance all your content. The Facebook, if you're running a business page, you can actually schedule all of your posts. And, and we do this. 
we'll schedule all of our posts, and then we'll go in and interact in real time to get that kind of live feel. But this way I know that if we get really busy and don't have time, there's still content on Facebook. And then you have to measure what works. Facebook insights are terrific. There's so much information there. Um, you can really get lost in it. I like to first hop in on the insight tool and look at kind of the overview. Are we going up or down? Is this week better or worse than last week? You can look at what types of posts are doing well. Video, links, photos. Photos typically outperform video. Why? Because people don't want to commit the time necessarily to video. You may get the same amount of reach, but you're going to get more engagement with photos than video. And you can see that here, they reached about the same number of people, but 283 people clicked, whereas only 53 clicked the video. Take a look at the engagement metrics. Look at which days of the week are you more likely to get posts, comments, and shares. When we were looking at this um, data for one of our clients, we kind of wondered what the heck happened here, and it turns out we actually didn't post any content for a couple of days. And so that sort of created the, the problem. Take a look at individual posts and really go line by line to see what was it about this one that made it so strong and why did this one not perform as well. You can also look at who engages with your content. For most of our clients, we don't find this information really all that helpful. It's worth taking a look at and seeing, does this match up with who you think your target customer is? We found it really interesting. We actually get more interaction on Facebook from men, but on our website, our audience tends to skew more female. It was a little backwards from what we really expected. Take a look at when your fans are online. Um, this is the, pretty much the standard Facebook curve. I, I kind of call it the whale. Most businesses look like this. They die off late at night, they come up during the day, and then they start to die off again. But in some niche industries, you may see a dramatically different picture. And if you do, that tells you when you need to be posting content. And now you need to be thinking about advertising. So let's take a little bit of a quick look at advertising. I always think that you should start with your best content. Take a look at what people reacted to. What did they like, share, and comment? That will give you some clues as to which of your content you should be advertising. Select and design your ad. The Facebook advertising tool is awesome because you can simply boost a post or create from scratch a new status update. But again, notice that our graphic here has no words and we use the text here to describe it and then here's a link to the web page. When it comes to deciding who should see your ad, you really need to think about who, who do you want to reach? Do you want to reach your fans? Let them know you have a special offer. Do you want to reach their friends? Because their friends are likely to be people like them. Are you interested in a specific demographic? And I have been absolutely blown away by how much Facebook knows about us. Not just age and where we live and if we have children, but things like, I'm interested in fine dining. I'm interested in 
accounting, I'm interested in legal issues, and use that information to slice and dice your audience. And you can also do something called cloning your email list. You can actually upload your email list and say, I want these people to see my ad, or I want to clone it, and I want people who are like these people to see my ad. Then you can decide how much you want to spend. And when you put in your daily budget and you put in how long the ad is going to run, Facebook will tell you about how many people you can reach. And then you can decide if that's enough or not enough. And then at the end of the day, you want to go back and look at your results. We ran two different ads for a client. The first one reached 6,900 people. We spent 18 cents a click, and we were spending $5 a day. The second one, we spent about half as much money, and so you'd expect that the reach and the clicks would be half, but they weren't. That was a much better ad. We spent half as much, but we got more, we got more cl clicks, and our, our reach was about two-thirds of what we saw on the first one. So for $35, $36, we got our ad in front of almost 11,000 people, and we drove 225 people to the website. This is, and I think this is the really the key with Facebook, is it is so affordable. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get your message in front of a lot of people. You can run a very short campaign, five, six days, learn a lot, really kind of narrow in on that worked, that didn't, and then run it again. Okay, that's kind of a wrap. If you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out.